Alrighty, so we are going to do the classic Kiwi road trip to the North Island, uh, starting down just where we live, south of Lincoln. We're going to drive uh, up to Kaikoura, Blenheim, uh, through to Taupo, up to uh, Taronga, Hamilton, Raglan, then uh, back via Hastings. Wellington and uh, back to Christchurch. Uh, we're going to see obviously how far we can travel. We're going to take a note of uh, how much it costs us in charging and just how annoying it is with this car having AC only charging, how much of an inconvenience it is having to find charges, not being able to use the DC charger network. First charge place we're charging, just the Balvars warehouse. Uh, I mean, we don't need to stop here, we could easily get to Blenheim, but uh, we need breakfast anyway. So we might as well stop. Look at that, it's another EV. So we're just uh, leaving the uh, Belfast uh, warehouse. Uh, our next stop is uh, Blenheim, although we'll probably uh, stop a few places on the way. It's about 300 k's all up, so uh, we have no problems getting there. So we're entering the small town of Cheviot. We're just over 105 k's into our journey, so uh, I think it's about a third of the way to Picton, uh, sorry, Blenheim. We have made it to Kaikoura. We've done 173 k's so far on this leg. We've got 209 kilometers left on the gasometer and we're at 55% state of charge. Just dropped on the 50% state of charge. We have done nearly 200 Ks, and we've got 184 left on the gasometer. Uh, with this particular E6, just because we've got good tires on it, we can actually get further than the gasometer uh, states. Um, I did this trip about two weeks ago, going the other way, and I was gonna get uh, about 420 Ks to a charge. The thing is, the E6 always starts at 400 k's on the gasometer, no matter no matter what the uh, what you've done to make it get a better range. But it's actually reasonably accurate if you drive conservatively. Just arrived at Blenheim. We've got 23% uh, left in the battery. We've done 303 k's, and we've got 72 k's left on the gasometer. So it's about where we uh, expect to be. It is rainy and miserable now, but. You know, it's easy. I mean, we could easily now drive to Wellington if we wanted to, but uh, we have decided to stay in Blenheim the night already because uh, there's a few things in Blenheim uh, we want to go and see. But here we are at Just Browsing. Uh, this is one of the most interesting shops around. Possibly the best secondhand shop in New Zealand. Um, it has some crazy stuff in it. It is a crazy place with lots of cool things. So we've stopped for the night at the Bella Vista Motel. Um, we got here uh, easily with 23% charge remaining. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're staying because they do have a charger. They've got type 2, 7 kilowatt. So it's bloody perfect. And they have their own beautiful BMW iX3. Which... So we're just leaving the Bella Vista Motel, heading for uh, Picton on the uh, second leg of our journey. Uh, we're fully charged at the hotel, which is great because, you know, free charging. So, so far, we've done uh, about 380 k and we've spent zero dollars and zero cents on fuel. So, we're at the ferry. Uh, yeah, this is always an extremely exciting Is it the first E6 on the ferry? Probably not. Wellington. At least the weather's nice. So we're in central Wellington and it's our first paid charging session. It is costing us about 40 cents a kilowatt hour, which is not too bad, but uh, we're going out for hot chocolate and coffee, so we thought we might as well charge the car so it's fully charged for tomorrow morning. So a big thanks to the guys at Palmerston North Automotive. Uh, not only did we charge our car, but it was also free. So uh, they are uh, accommodating the cheapskate like me, who is looking to uh, do their North Island uh, road trip for as little as possible. So we've arrived at Oakune. Uh This is the first real paid charger we've used. Uh, it's one of the few AC fast chargers. Um, I just wanted to come here and check that it did work with our car, which I was pretty confident it did. I'm sure I've used these before in the North Island. Um, 
Coming here was probably the most energy intensive part of the trip. We would have only got about 340, 350 k's of range rather than the usual sort of 400, but still that's plenty. And the car's fully loaded with three people and all of our baggage. Uh, the charger costs about 25 cents a kilowatt hour plus 25 cents a minute, so I expect it to be quite an expensive charge, but uh, you know, it should only take about an hour to charge the car, so I can live with that. It's still significantly cheaper than petrol, and at the end of the day, you know, we need to support them putting charges in and use them and uh, pay for them. Uh, free fast charging is actually a bit of a, a bit of a problem because it means that the charges are always full, so for the times I use them, which is really only when I'm on a road trip, I don't really mind paying. Uh, we do need, uh, obviously, charges. So we've just stopped at Drive EV in Taupo for a while. It was intended to be a very short trip stop. We didn't really need to stop here, uh, but uh, we've got family here. We thought we'd say hello, but uh, the girls have discovered the shops, so I'm going to get a full charge. So just a quick update because we haven't really done any videos at all. We are uh, now just outside Tarango. We are headed to Rotorua to do the tree walk. So far we've done just over about a thousand k's I think. We've done 1100 k's on our trip so far. We've used uh, a couple of fast charges actually. There's more around than you think. Um, yeah, cars performed pretty flawlessly. Rotorua uh, night uh, redwood tree work which was uh, quite fun. Uh, we've driven over from Tauranga, so we charged to Tauranga. We've driven to Rotorua, now we're driving to Hamilton which is uh, about an hour and a half away where we're going to stay the night, arriving about 11 o'clock at night and then uh, we will drive to uh, Raglan where there is an AC fast charger and we'll charge there and uh, meet up with a friend for breakfast. So, you know, you can drive from Tauranga via Road River to Hamilton and then to Raglan on a single charge. It's really getting to the point where it's not such an issue anymore. I remember trying such journeys before in our leaf and, you know, you'd be charging three or four times. That was still fun, though. So we're, uh, we're going to uh, pull up this BP here because that's the future of BP. Is they're really just here to provide EV drivers with coffee late at night. Uh, they don't really have any other use. We could really troll them by parking at the pumps. Oh look, and there's a leaf here as well. See? Well, doing the, actually, uh, he may have actually used... Oh, they've got a charger over there. So, uh, good on them. Good on them having a charger. They can see the future. I've actually known the future for years and years and years. Here we are at the uh, Well Networks uh, Fast Charge in Raglan and it is one of the few which is free so that's cool. A uh, 43 kilowatt fast charger. Yep. Uh, can't complain about free gas really. So we've just got back to Tauranga from Raglan. We charged to 100% Raglan. We're 50% so we've driven and basically 187 k's uh, via uh, Sanctuary Island, which is Sanctuary Mountain, which is a bird sanctuary, so it's taking us quite a long way out of the way. And uh, back to Tauranga for 50% charge. So that's you know pretty impressive. You can go one side of the country to the other on half a charge. I mean, uh, yeah, and some of that's quite steep. You know, obviously we've driven over the Kaimai Ranges. Uh, from Raglan itself is pretty steep to Raglan to Hamilton. So certainly for the road trip so far, this car is just fine. We're uh, just headed to the Taranga Warehouse where there is a 22 kilowatt charger where we're going to charge up and get some coffee. So just a quick update, we've uh, stopped the Taupo Warehouse to charge. We've just come from Taranga via our family do at uh, Lake Rufagaitu. Uh, we're just going to stop for an hour. Uh, we don't really need to charge, but uh, we're going to drive through to Napier for the night, so we might as well stop and have a walk around the lake in this beautiful uh, Taupo. So, 
So just a quick update, we are now driving between Taupo and uh, Napier. Uh, it's not a road I've ever driven before, so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, it looks reasonably steep. We've left with uh, just over 70% state of charge. It's only 144 k's and the gasometer says we've got 270 k's remaining. So we shouldn't have any issues getting there. It's decided to rain. Uh, we're not actually going to charge, but just to show there is a charger here that will work with this car. Uh, unfortunately, it's only the 22 kilowatt model, but still, uh, it's on the Napier Highway, so that is a useful thing. So it's a beautiful scenery, this road, uh, and it's quite interesting because although we were climbed up uh, quite steeply initially, and I looked at it and went, oh, you know, if we uh, continue climbing at this rate, we'll be, uh, we'll be marginal for power. For the past, I don't know, 40 k's, we've basically not used any energy, we're still sitting at 58 percent, and we have been for a very, very long time. Um, that is quite a fun road. Certainly uh, a trip that is easily achievable in this car. So far. But I guess uh, the Central Plateau Taupo is pretty high up. And the uh, Napier obviously is uh, on the coast at sea level. So I guess I've got to get from there to there. And that's kind of where the Something as heavy as the E6 going downhill does generate quite a lot of power. But it's a beautiful trip. Just stopping again for interest sake, just to, uh, there's a bit more, there's actually a lot more Type 2 chargers than I thought there would be around. So, you know, this is the second one on this, uh, this route. So, you know, it's quite feasible driving this car around the country. I mean, obviously it takes a bit longer to charge at 22 kilowatt, but, uh, the fact that you've got sort of 400 k's of range means that, you know, mostly you can stop overnight. Uh, we have had to charge a couple of times during the day, but to be honest, to do this trip in a leaf with 200 k's range and DC charging would actually, I think, take longer than it does in this with only 22 kilowatt charging and sort of 400 k's of range. You know, I mean, it's a toss up. There's obviously a lot more DC charges around, but. So far, this trip has been actually pretty painless. We've had one charger trip out, but we still had plenty of range anyway. We were really just stopping for a minute. But other than that, it's been sweet so far. So we've just had the uh, classic family Christmas conversation about uh, when you turn up at the electric car at the campground, about how basically electric cars can't really do lots of things, and how there's much worse Emission, emissions, how basically, uh, you know, aircraft are worse, and heavy trucks are worse, and there doesn't, there seems to be a lack of an understanding that yes, there are lots of emission sources and they are all bad, but uh, they're all different and they all need to be addressed. You know, uh, electric cars are only one of the many, many, many things we need to fix, but they're an independent thing. You know, just because you can't fix heavy trucks right now doesn't mean you can't fix electric vehicles. And certainly for New Zealand, you know, EVs are a no-brainer with basically us going from, you know, importing all our fuel to making all our fuel in New Zealand. So, uh, here we are at a destination, the Shoreline Motel, uh, and we've used Your destination 34 is on the left. charge, so that's reasonably impressive considering. So we've made it as far as the uh, EV link charger in the warehouse in Napier and it's going to take a couple of hours to charge here. Um, it's a free charger, you know, but it is the only one in town, so one day I'm sure they will start charging for the service. But uh, for now, thank you the warehouse, uh, you are awesome. So we're just leaving uh, Napier, we're going to stop and see some friends in Havelock North and then we're going to drive through to uh, firstly Masterton then uh, Wellington, it's about 300 k something like that, but we have to go over the Rimitakas, so they're reasonably steep, we just see how that goes, I'm sure we'll be fine. So we're just here at Hastings at the Charger, uh, we just needed to get a little bit more while we had breakfast, and then we'll be heading off to uh, drive to Wellington. We we'll stopped for a toilet break, but there is actually a DC Charger here. Um, it's great to see the network being built out so quickly. It's a shame the E6 can't use them, but 
we don't really need it to be honest you know I mean we're easily gonna go Napier to uh, Wellington if we wanted to we are gonna stop in Masterton for a quick charge but um, you know we don't actually need to we could easily get all the way to Wellington and uh, up here on the hill look at that wind turbines lots of them isn't that awesome we need more of that shit we have arrived at the warehouse Masterton where we're going to stop and have a bit of charge. We've done 215 k's and we have used 56% uh, state of charge. Now, someone seemed to think we would have trouble with the Rebataka Hill but uh, so far it uh, doesn't really seem to be particularly big effort. It would have to be a lot steeper than this to be a problem. This thing's got like 450 newton meters of torque, so it'll literally go up in anything. It'll run out of traction long before it runs out of power. So I think we've just summited the Rematuka Hill, and we've got 67% state of charge. So what will be interesting to see is just how much we have when we get to the bottom of the hill. Because theoretically I don't think we'll use any energy going down here. We had about 70% no, we must have been about 75% I think when we started. Video might tell us. But uh, we should use nothing going down. In fact, we should gain energy the whole way down. So that'll be... Uh, certainly, it's a great benefit with this thing is that... You know, like, I really don't have to use any brakes pretty much on any hill. You know, there's no there's no using your brake pads at all. You just take your foot off the accelerator and it'll regen it up to 40 kilowatts. And it'll charge the battery up. So it's, you know, regening at 35 kilowatts. So that is, uh, you know, like if we were going down here for an hour, which we obviously won't be, then we would half fill the battery. And not, not only are you, uh, you know, recharging your battery, you're also travelling along without using any fuel. You know, so going down the hill, both you travel for free and you refill your car. That is the opposite of uh, what you get used to with a petrol vehicle. So I think we're down the bottom of the Rematakas now, and uh, I don't know, we travelled about maybe 10, 15 k's, and we gained 2% state of charge back. So that's about uh, a kilowatt and a half, I guess, something like that. So, yeah. And we're still pretty much traveling for free. In fact, I reset the uh, average consumption per 100 kilometers uh, about probably 10 k's ago. I just wondered whether it could possibly go negative, but no, it just sits there at zero. So we've arrived in Wellington and we're charging in the Bond Street car park. Uh, it is 30 cents a kilowatt hour, so it's not too bad, but um, free charging today. We charged to 82% in uh, Masterton and we arrived here with 60%. So 22% uh, over the Rematakas, uh, I mean it's pretty good really. I mean we could easily drive from uh, Napier to Wellington on a single charge, no issue whatsoever. Not at me, at the car. <laughs> so we're just... Uh, there's a service called Mevo here in Wellington, I think it's in uh, Auckland, maybe it's Christchurch as well, where you pay a small amount of money and you can drive around in uh, fancy new electric cars. So uh, a friend of mine has uh, brought me this Polestar 2 and forced me to drive it. Seems a little rough, it is very nice, but uh, it does cost $80,000. So uh, it's a little bit out of my price range, but nice to be able to test out all these uh, shiny new EVs for uh, 25 bucks a pop. Actually, to be honest, he's paying for it, so uh, it's even better. So we've uh, stopped at the Sustainability Trust uh, in Central Wellington. Uh, there is a shortage of 22 kilowatt chargers in Wellington, which is a pain. Um, this charger requires uh, log in via uh, a website uh, but it seems to be working fine with the E6 uh, we probably only need to stay here for uh, 
10 to 15 minutes. I just want to make sure we're absolutely 100% because we have to drive all the way from Wellington to Christchurch uh, in the middle of the night because we get off the ferry quite late. Uh, yeah, it'll be fine, I'm sure. So we are just leaving the Picton Ferry on the final leg of our journey and we are going to drive straight to Christchurch with no charging. We've got 97% state of charge, uh, we've done 5Ks, uh, so it's only 365Ks to home, so should be no trouble. Uh, it is the furthest uh, leg I've attempted outside of range testing this car as sort of a single journey and although there are charges in Blenheim there is actually no AC charging between here and Christchurch other than Blenheim and we'll be well past Blenheim before we have any troubles but still I have driven Blenheim to home plenty of times and always get home with about 25% state of charge so it should be no problem whatsoever to add the little bit extra to pick that. So just a quick update as we are now 130 k's in. Uh, it's now pissing with rain and obviously that does not help a whole lot. But you know, yes I'm just says we're still gonna make it. I think worst case scenario we'll have to charge in Belfast and Christchurch but I don't think so, you know, but uh, this is kind of the worst scenario. The, worst scenario. the only thing that could happen the worst is if we uh, now got like a 100 km hour headwind, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So we've uh, just entered Amberley. We've got uh, about another 70 k's to go, and we've got 70 k's left on the gasometer. So you know, it seems like we'll probably make it. Uh, we are quite a far, we are going, we'd easily make it to uh, Christchurch itself, but we are hoping to go uh, home, which is just about eight k's from Leeston, which is uh, Sydney, which is about 30 k's south of Christchurch. Um, I would note that with three people in the car and all our luggage and quite a headwind, and uh, rain, uh, it, has, it has affected our range quite a bit. Um, when I've done this trip from Blenheim, on my own, in the car, on in good weather, I've ended up at home with about 25%. It took us about, about 10% to get from Picton to Blenheim. So, yeah, it does make a difference. But still, it looks like we'll probably get there. Probably. So we have pretty much been to Christchurch now. We're just uh, entering, I guess, the city limits at the uh, on the motorway. We've done 332 k's so far. Uh, we've got 15% state of charge remaining and 41 k's. So we're uh, we're going to make it to uh, Leeston pretty easily, I think. So, uh, yeah, successful trip. I mean, you can certainly drive from uh, Wellington to Christchurch in an E6 relatively comfortably. I mean, 15% is fine. We'll probably have about 6% when we get home, I think. But I'm comfortable with that. And considering it was raining and windy and uh, I did drive it a little bit inefficiently at the beginning of the trip, I have slowed down a lot. Yeah, it, it does require you to drive conservatively to do that kind of distance in those conditions. So we're uh, pretty much home now. Um, we have done 370 k's, pretty much exactly on uh, this final leg of the journey. And we've got, well it says 0 k's, 5%, so that's actually about uh, 15 to 18 kilometer buffer. It's not a lot. And to be honest, I probably could have driven a little bit more efficiently. However, you know, we've still driven from Wellington to, you know, pretty much Leeston uh, on a single charge. So I think that's pretty impressive. Um, over the whole trip, we've done 2,835 k's. And our total charging cost is about $80. Um, so that's reasonably impressive. I am a tight ass. Uh, and the one thing that has really surprised me is 
how easy it's actually been. Like I, I really thought that we would have uh, some really annoying times waiting for AC charging. And there was really only a couple of times when we were really waiting at all. Um, in Palmerston North, we went for a reasonably long walk. We, we didn't necessarily have to charge there, but we did just because we were going all the way up to Oakune. And um, once in Taupo we had a charger trip out, but once again we didn't actually need to charge there. We were travelling between Taronga and uh, Napier, which I'd never done before, and it turns out we would have easily made it in a single charge. In fact, uh, I think we would have only used about 60% of the battery on that whole trip just because it's a long way, it's all downhill. So all in all, um, you know, I mean, obviously it's not as easy as a road trip in a petrol car, but, you know, like, it's about as environmentally sustainable as you can do it. I mean, you know, unless you're prepared to do a push bike or something, but, you know, if you're a fat, lazy guy like me and you want to go for a road trip, you know, uh, this is quite a good option from my point of view.